that there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Om Shanti Hi, Shanti Hi, Shanti. Namaskar. Welcome. <coughs> Dearest Papaji, may I come in front of you to receive your grace to help me still the mind. I feel that looking into your eyes, I will find it. Michael, is there a place to people in the people? Okay, you stop. <coughs> Who told you, if you look into the eyes of a person, you will find peace and rest? Who told you? Hmm? I may tell you, there is a truth in it. If you see the eyes of a person whose mind is still, then you can find peace within yourself also. Either you look in the eyes of a man whose mind is still, or look at his heart, and then your mind will be still. It is the same thing. So look into the eyes, and you will find peace. You will be attracted by those eyes, and you will forget to look anywhere else. You might have heard about a person who stood at the bank of the lake, which was crystal clear, and he found, and he looked into his eyes, and he found such a tremendous beauty that throughout his own life he didn't see anywhere else. So like this, you have to look within your eyes, behind your eyes, not from behind, and you will find the trick how to keep quiet. <laughs> it is so good to see you after these days you have been away. It was a good experience for me to stay in Lucknow the whole time, feeling your presence, not reading, not needing to go anywhere else, not needing to, to be anything, not needing anything, some strength coming into me from I do not know from where. It is something very solid, like from the earth, yet it is clear like crystal and moves with the wind. Not stable in the solidity, I feel something in me getting ready to be in the world, yet I will stay here until you tell me to leave. What are you doing? are not doing to me. I love you, Papa, and I want to come nearer yet. 
you are already in my own heart. May I come and be in your house with you. May I eat the food from your plate, walk in your shoes, and speak with your mouth. I am yours. Please tell me what to do and what not to. Loving you eternally, Nirmala. Nirmala can come here and You are always welcome to come to my house, as you have been already told, isn't it? And now what you speak about eating the food from your plate actually means <coughs> eat the, f the words that I speak about. This is the meaning of eating from the plate. But some people mistake it and actually they start eating and licking the <laughs> So you will know that what I speak, you have to digest these words. If I tell you, you are free, you have to digest this food in your heart. That is eating the food in the plate. Then walk in your shoes. Nobody can walk into the shoes. It <laughs> It may <laughs> it means do as I do. That is walking into the shoes. And speak with your mouth when you will identify yourself as me itself. And then your mouth, your tongue is my tongue. Then you can speak the words which I speak. Please tell me what to do. This you have got to do. <laughs> you can go to your place, somebody else. My beloved Master, <clears throat> my name is Anna Pala. I am Brazilian and I was expecting your return so much. It's so very good to be with you again. I have dreamt with you and after that I am in such a special space and as I do not speak English, I just want to come and sit in front of you and sing to you all my gratitude and love. Also, I would like if you could give me a new name. I hope I could have this grace with all my love, Anna Pala. You are from Brazil. Yes. Do you speak a little bit of English or uh, you need somebody to translate into Portuguese? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from Rio? You can come and translate. You know her? Yes. 
No, no, no. You no, come. She understands that. Huh? She understands what you say. She understands, okay. <laughs> So in the dream, <coughs> you experienced that you were in a very special space, very special place. And what do you mean by that? In the dream you got this thing. And then you remember what has happened in the dream, that you were in a very special space. What was this space, which you didn't forget? when you wake up. The people get up and forget their dreams, you see. But you remember this dream in this space, so it is not a dream. It is something special, not waking, not dreaming, not sleeping, something beyond that's called space, you see. And space has no limitations, it cannot be anything of waking, sleeping and dreaming. So you find out what was it. And this is the same space that has brought you from Brazil to here. So you have to remember this space and fall in love with this space, you see. Not looking here, <coughs> there, anywhere. And space is your own self that brought you here. <laughs> so immediately when you hear the word space, you have both the hands giant on your own heart, you see. So keep your hands here always, you see. <laughs> and then you should be very clever to forget everything of the past because now you need a new name. See. And your name was Paula. And I give you a new name just now so that you will be absolutely new person from today, this moment. This is your name, which means divine love. Love divine, which is prema. In Sanskrit, you have to do, you have to fall in love with your own self, and that is called I am prema, you see.
Dear Papa Ji, <coughs> Ganga Ji's words and presence brought me to see you in India. When I first heard her in Boulder in September, she said, I looked into Papa Ji's eyes and immediately I saw God. In my heart, she planted the resolve to come and see you here with the hope. Also, I could look into your eyes. I know I will see God there. Margaret Craig. Is she here? Is he here? here. No. <coughs> you know? <it>? No. <coughs> hmm. You heard from Ganga Ji? Yes. And she is just now, just behind you. <laughs> I was never this close to her. It means you must be very much interested to see God, therefore, that God has brought you here now. Who will come from such a far off place unless you are really in love with it? You see? Yes. And it is quite enough, you see. Just a thought came to you, but who sent you this thought? God. From where? From within? Mm -hmm that brought you here, so that you may be convinced this is the same God which spoke to me in Boulder and also pushed you here. Yeah. Everyone is God, you see, but we don't see unless we see God within ourselves. First you see and then you will see God everywhere, even in the animals, birds, rocks also. So I'm very glad you are here, you see. <laughs> more and more I see God in every person's eyes, who in some eyes God seems to be hiding <laughs> God is not hiding, you see. I tell you, when you speak, God is hiding. Once somebody was speaking to God and Sometimes he felt God is hiding. You see. So the God appeared and spoke to him, I never hide. At that time, when you don't see God, you are looking elsewhere. <laughs> you are looking elsewhere and not to me, therefore you don't see me, you see. So you have to absolutely look at God and nothing else, then it is the God who is seeing through your eyes, you see. Once uh, a man was sitting on the mountain and he was always remembering God, but some wild elephant appeared in front of him and God stood up to save him from the elephant, but this man at that time took a stone 
in his hand to to hit back so that to save his life and to scare the elephant away then god returned and sat again there and someone who was sitting with the god asked him where did you run immediately what far he said my devotee was in trouble being attacked by the elephant therefore i immediately rushed and then why did you return back after few steps because he picked up a stone to look after himself therefore it doesn't need me <laughs> so when you rely yourself when you surrender yourself on god you will have to be keep quiet so that he will take your responsibilities and so long you have responsibility on your own head god doesn't bother about and it seems he's hiding <laughs> i also bring a question from me and a psychotherapist friend who's also devoted to ganga ji is here no she is in america amen <coughs> we are questioning the value of much of the work of psychotherapy which seeks to resolve early childhood tra- childhood trauma transpersonal psychology says we need a stable cohesive egoic identity before we can surrender our ego identity and be involved in self inquiry to this to this is this necessary to conduct this self inquiry you don't need anything else except surrender your ego to the self itself so when you conduct this inquiry you have to give up everything that belongs to past no psychology or any is going to help you in this thing so you have to get rid of anything that belongs to past now is the time to inquire who are you yeah. so So we should give up the work of psychotherapy and just be in now. Yes. Wonderful. Glory, glory. Since you teach teach us that the past is illusion. Past is illusion. that I advise everybody to think that all the past is illusion and since the idea of separate me is also an illusion separate me is also illusion it's not reality at all and what is real what is real if it is not uh, past if it is not illusion to start from your foot to head and tell me what is what is real in it just god <laughs> there's nothing real because reality is which does not fade away mm-hmm. and these feet legs chest and head some time ago you got it you see maybe 50 years ago 60 years ago mm-hmm. and after 50 60 years these will disappear so what appears and disappear is illusion what does not appear and does not disappear at all is real so living aside the body also belong to the past therefore illusion so not thinking of the body for just one moment find out who i am not going back to the body 
not to mind, not to senses. Then what is left is your own self. And you can instantly have this experience. If you tie any rope to the past, you are not going to recognize your own self. Should we not just stay in this now momentary moment and merge with Divine Light to the best of our ability? So this is advice you are giving to your own Self. Should we not just stay in this now momentary moment? So it is, you need not advise yourself, you have to be in this now, which is called reality. Now, not before, not later, just now, this instant. And don't postpone it, you see. my heart and the hearts of so many in this lifetime. So you are very lucky that you know that you have got to do in this life and let me assure you that you have done it. <laughs> very nice. Let us sit Papaji, how do I get back to my true nature, Rod? Rod can come here in the meantime. Now I like to give you a new name so that you return back and tell your friends, I am reborn at Lucknow. And everybody knows once his own self, this is his second birth during this lifetime and all the previous illusions of the birth will be over. So this name I'm giving you, <coughs> which can be slightly translated into English, maternal love, because I have no other word, means you will give love to all beings as the mother does to the children. <laughs> and they will be happy. Every child is happy when the mother loves them. And with the love, you have to tell them your own 
self into them. That is the meaning of word mamta. Yeah, you can pronounce it. Yeah, little. Where is this letter? How do I get back to my own true nature? That's all or something else also. No? <laughs> uh-huh, here, no? Start from here. So. I have been a Buddhist monk for ten years <laughs> practicing teachings of the Buddha. However, instead of feeling more alive and free, I feel dry and repressed. <laughs> How does one let go the habit of repression and control? What can I do now to be back to my true nature? You see, all the Buddhists, what monks have seen, they are very dry. <laughs> Because I have seen many Buddhist monks, Rinpoches, in Europe and America and other, in Nepal also, you see. They are all very dry <laughs> because they don't have love, because Buddha doesn't teach love to people, just because he ran away from his house, <laughs> meditating and meditating all the time. <laughs> You didn't find love. And God, another name of God is love. They say God is love, love is God, you see. So they're all very dry and <laughs> one, one becomes dry because always sitting under the tree, <laughs> ignoring the world. Ignoring the world, even ignoring Yashodara, his own wife, and Rahul also, you see. They were the source of love. Little Rahul didn't know. <laughs> my, my father is leaving for something. So, only chanting, only chanting, Mani Padme Ham, Mani Padme Ham, Mani Padme Ham. So, so here is my friend. So this is another letter. No? Two letters. Same handwriting. Yes, this one. Okay, this is his letter. How do I get back to my true nature, Rod? Yes, <laughs> I think it's very easy, very easy to tell you how you can get back to your true nature with a rod. <laughs> Where's my rod here? I used to have a rod here, no? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Therefore, when in the school the student has not given a correct answer, the teacher uses a rod so that next time he doesn't make mistake. So I don't think you need a rod, you need love. It's very easy if you love your own self. 
you will find God within your own self. And you will get back to your true nature only with love, not with the rods. <laughs> with the rod? <laughs> with the rod, even the student will not go to attend this class once again, and some have never gone to school if the teacher uses a rod. If I love you, God needs only love. Therefore, you must love God. Hmm. So, rod is not good for you. Rod I will use. Now, I've been practicing Buddhism eight years, teaching of the Buddha. However, instead of feeling more alive and free, I feel dry and repressed. How does one let go of the habit of repression and control? What am I doing wrong? So, what's your name? Kud Kudu? <laughs> Covido. Huh? Covido. Co uh, Covido. <laughs> Covido. Mm. <laughs> what does it mean? One who sees. Huh? One who sees. 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 Or one who knows. One who sees? <laughs> Seer. Ah. Video like video. Hmm? <laughs> video. Yeah. So you don't need any videos. <laughs> uh, you have to see. You have to be the seer. Seer, not seen. Not object of sight, but the seer. Hmm? Do you follow? I may explain. You can explain a bit more. <laughs> <clears throat> so whatever you see is an object of sight. And Atman cannot be object of sight. So seer is one who simply sees. And he is not an object. He is above all, all objects to see. So whatever is the object, the sight of the seer is to be rejected. It has to be rejected because it will be rejected some day or the other. You start from your own body, you see your own body, isn't it? It's an object. Whatever you speak, you know who is speaking, therefore object. Now I take you behind all objects. Whatever you see, think, smell, hear, taste or touch is object. So like this, every world, whole the universe is included in this thing. Whatever you see, like an object, whatever you hear, my words are music, Whatever you smell, flowers or others, whatever you taste, food, whatever you speak, tongue, whatever you touch, hands. All this is objects. Even to begin with, all the five elements, earth, you see, water, you taste, fire, you can feel, then air, also you can feel with your body, and the Akasha also, all five objects, elements are objects. And you are beyond these elements. Beyond earth, water, fire, air, ether. This you can see. Now you have to see what is the seer. Now you have to tell me who sees all these things. Now you have to turn your face towards this who is the seer. 
not towards the objects, not outward, but somewhere beyond. Hmm? I am. Hmm? I am. Yes, I am. And this I am is not object, not subject, you see. I am is I am. And this I am is that I am. Now, this I am has to turn its head towards that. Still beyond. This I am has to turn its head now beyond that. I don't understand that. Hmm? I don't understand. Yes, because you cannot understand. <laughs> you have not to understand. Understanding is with the mind. And this I am taking you beyond the mind, you are not to understand. Therefore, lay down your understanding. Lay down your understanding, don't try to understand, and don't try to think, what is this understanding? Now, again tell me, who are you? Not I am. Not understanding, I am. Who can understand I am? Now you turn your face towards that. First you said I am, and now you speak, tell me. Lay down the I am. Also understanding, also thinking, also efforts. It's just, just this. Hmm? Just this. Just is. Just this. Just is, yes. And this isness is called enlightenment. Because isness cannot be seen, smelt, heard, touched or tasted. Isness is only isness. <coughs> now, would you like to go still beyond? Or isness is enough. <laughs> I don't know if you can go beyond. <laughs> can you go beyond isness? You? You can't go beyond isness. No, I will tell you how to go. <laughs> it is if you say if you cannot go beyond, it means you are giving limitations to it, you see. So if you are here till tomorrow, I think you will find out. You will not limit this, that I can't go beyond. It's no limitation. So you do it yourself and again write to me tomorrow. And you will get it. It's not difficult. It is very close. Therefore, you say you can't go beyond, you can't understand it. Now you are looking at me, and you, you are looking at every, every person, isn't it? But still, you do not see your own retina through which you are looking. Why? What is the trouble? Trouble is too much near. Near, too much near. Near. Nearest of anything. Even you can see your nose, you see. But retina through which you see, it cannot be seen, not difficult. <coughs> Only the nearness doesn't allow you to see now. Tomorrow you have to see what is very near, it cannot be seen. Why? Tomorrow you have this is the question for you tomorrow. Why the retina cannot be seen, or what is very near, too much near, why we cannot see it? Now you have to tell me this tomorrow. And this is a question for everybody who is here. So the best gatha will be rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> K 
Can you tell me? Yes. I only know divine light and hmm? I only think of divine light and God as, as what is near. No, no God can come near. You see, God can be uttered with the word. Uh, yeah. So let me clarify again. <laughs> Above all, beyond all, too much near. God is not too much near because you can utter it with words and you can draw a figure of God, imagination or something which is higher. You can't imagine also. It is too much near that I say, that cannot be defined by the word, by any sign, by any thought, not by any effort. So, it is so simple to know what it is. If you think, now you are thinking, it will not help you. <laughs> so, where does the, where does the love come in? Mm. The love, like a lot of what you have been saying, is what we already practice in Buddhism. What practice? A lot, much, much of what you have been saying to me this morning mm. is what we have already been practicing in mm. Buddhism. Yeah, that's what you have been practicing. For practice you need your physical body or mind to practice. So, you have not to use your physical body. Whatever you get by practicing with the physical body has to be physical result, physical form. Anything with the mind that you practice with the mind, what you are going to get should be mental. But this thing I am taking you beyond physicality, beyond mentality, beyond spirituality. This should be freedom. I write these words to you, to God, to Self, to Atman, to Ram, and to Krishna, and to Vishnu, and I abide with God, of God, about God, for God, in what appears as Pulchati Ashram in India. This is truly a lucky lifetime. These five days I have been blessed meeting with Shanti Mai and blessed meeting with Maharaji Shanti Mai's Guru. Of course, the flowing of this sacred water which yeah. Maybe you skip the line, Papa. Hmm? I think there was another line. A blessed meeting with Gangaji. Where is it? This. <laughs> your, your, I'm missing many words to see here because this, this handwriting is not good. I'm not able to see. Hmm. A blessed meeting with. To Ganga, as you say, the Jai Om Namaho Gangaya, which is this Ganga? <laughs> because at the bank of Ganga, Pulchat is Ganga, Rishikesh is Ganga, and Haridwar is Ganga, Lakshman Jula, where you met, is Ganga, and Shanti Mai lives at the bank of Ganga, Guru Maharaj lives at the bank of Ganga. I abide at the bank of Ganga. Huh? I abide, I live at the bank of Ganga. I see. Yeah. 
You come here, please. <laughs> the flowing. Ah, sacred water is flowing. Sacred water after which reflows or which reflects. Uh, I have only one question remaining, Punjaji. So you have mentioned so many people here, six, seven teachers. <laughs> <laughs> and then if any question is remaining, it is waste of time that you have wasted all the time meeting all these people. You see. If you go, to 20 restaurants in Hazelganj. <laughs> and you don't get full. <laughs> and still you are hungry, empty stomach. What's the use of those restaurants? It means you didn't go to restaurants, you see. I'm quite full, Papaji. I'm hmm? quite full. This has been the no, no, it is not fullness. No? No. Because if you were a fool, you would not have come to Lucknow. Mm. <laughs> Fill me up. Now, because if you have not solved this question of who am I, mm. this is fullness. This will give you fullness. Mm. This will remove your hunger forever. Mm. You have been hungry for 35 million years, you see. Mm. You must have seen many teachers, many preachers, mm. who have not satisfied your hunger. So this is a hunger removing <laughs> elixir, mm. amratam. So you find out who you are. Mm. That you have never done it before. <coughs> Do it now. So simple to find out who you are. You have not got to travel long mileage. I is here, Atman is here, Self is here. And now you have to find out who you are. Unless you do it, you cannot cut off this relationship with this cycle of transmigration appearing and disappearing again and again and this is going to continue for ever, millions of years. It will continue and if you want to stop it, you can do it instantly. Find out who you really are. So simple. So if someone has told you about this thing, there was no need to go anywhere else. Mm. <laughs> so you now tell me, this is a question which we are supposed to solve mm. this time. Mm. This time is very lucky time because we are in satsang. If we had held satsang before, there was no return. <laughs> so you are a good boy, young boy. You have got to do it this moment, this instant, in this finger snap. Yes, like this. Keep your hand here now. If you want words, words to describe what appears as this dream, this experience. Yes. <clears throat> None of them will touch the truth, but they but all the words are true. It is all truth. So the words are that's who I am, not the words, not the not anything. I I am 
I am everything and I am nothing. I am, but I am you, you, I am, you yeah, are me. I am God, you are God. Still statements. Statements, yes. Because while speaking to me, you use the word if, and this if is not truth. Yes. Yes, if. When did, did, I, when did I say if? You said this now. <laughs> <laughs> you just use the word if, you see. And if you use the word if, it is not truth. Will you use the word if when your wife is there and ask him if you are my wife? Nobody will speak the if. <laughs> I said if you want words. Ah, you, you said no, words, yes, yes. Ah, you said if. If means doubt. Doubt. There was a doubt because the doubt is, here you ask this question. Mm. I doubt that I can answer it in, because I doubt words can touch it. This is my doubt. Okay. Acha. If the words do not touch, then there is no inquiry. Acha. So my question was, who am I? Yes. Please, Papaji, tell me my name. This is the last Sentence, yes? yes, last sentence. Tell me my name. Mm. Just to identify this form in the world. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I'll give you, but you have not to use, take it as a word. A word is just for the convenience of speaking to each other in ignorance. Mm. But with ignorant people, we have to speak through the language of ignorance itself. Therefore, I also use words. <laughs> and if you are beyond that, I think by silence alone you will understand what I speak to you. And I give you a hint how to approach this question of who am I is just to keep quiet. And this keeping quiet is not a sentence. You have to keep quiet. But still the word has to be used. When the boys are naughty in the class, making mischief, speaking loud, the teacher shouts at them, keep quiet. And there is a result. Nobody is now speaking. All are in their seats, you see. Yet, this word, keep quiet, is not the silence. This has no silence, keep quiet, you see. So if I tell you, you are free, how about this? Also a word like a teacher, you are free and you will not speak if or what in this thing. If I tell you you are free, yeah, freedom must be there. Yet these words don't hold these words that Papaji has told me keep quiet. Don't think of keep quiet also. Don't touch this word keep quiet also. Then what's going to happen? Then your language my language will be very different. May I take some pictures? Hmm? Hey? What do you say? 
May I take some pictures? Picture you will take later, but then you wanted a name also, so that people will will forget about your previous name. What was your name here in the letter? What do you write? I wrote at the end. Yes. Om Nama. Ganga. No, your name you are not given. No. Okay. I then. do not have a name. Hmm. As of yet. Hmm? I have no name as of yet. Yes. So you can't say your name and somebody asks you what's your name and he will, you will speak Namaha Gangaya. So they will not understand to whom they speak because if they speak to Ganga, she doesn't reply. She is all compassion and you will speak to her in silence. You see. So I, still I have to give you name because you will be meeting people and people will be meeting you to address each other, everyone we need name, you see. And some have very foolish names. <laughs> So it is better to have a good name at least, because some have name Mr. Bull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many bulls in states, you see. Eh? <laughs> and some are Mr. Fox also. <laughs> So I give you the name, the best name, which will take you at least to a person, not even a person, but who has given light to this universe. So that name I am going to give you. If at all anybody will think about this name, he will have to Remember about a person who is enlightened one, and that name is Gautam. Gautam, the name of Buddha. <laughs> okay. Mm. How do you spell it? Hmm? How do you spell it? Oh, yes, I give you the meaning. <coughs> Gautam was the name of Buddha before becoming Buddha. Buddha is also not a name, you see. The awakened one is called Buddha, you see. Now, give this camera to somebody else, and you come here. Who is yes? Anybody can I come here. Come. What's your name? Gautam. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. I am very happy with you. This is the right time to understand one's own self, mm. not when your hair will turn grey, mm. but then she has done very well here. Mm. <laughs> Even with the grey hair. <laughs> Good boy, no? Young boy. Earlier the better, you see. Otherwise, when you are old, many diseases will <laughs> attack on you and you are thinking of only doctors. Mm. And not <laughs> There must have been some, some very good karma that has brought you here. I am very happy about the young man. <laughs> okay. Which country mm. you belonged to? <laughs> mm. America, California. California. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, that's true. Just by the very nice. <laughs> yes. Chandi Devi, may I have an appointment with you at 5 p.m.? Where is Chandi Devi? And you are always there. Yeah. <laughs> Please come in. <laughs> yes, Chandi <Jenny> Deva. <laughs> so, 5.30, eh? Not 5. 5.30, <laughs> yeah. Because Chandi Devi comes at five. <laughs> and Chandi Deva, five thirty. Half an hour separation. <laughs> Very good. So you have come to have darshan of Chandi Devi? <laughs> So you are welcome, 5.30. Hanning. <laughs> Beloved Papaji, I would like to look into your eyes, Hanning. Hani. I always felt different and unhappy and that something is very wrong, but I didn't know what. Few months ago I lost my job. The very next morning I knew this is the ni right time for me to go away. I started traveling with a general idea where I am going to. But then I let the stream taking me and it took me here to you. I ask who am I because without mind there is no past name and the question is gone. And if there is no mind, no question, there is no answer. So what's left? The body that sits here now with all the emotions in it is that it. Who is Gali? How to become mindless? How to turn off this computer which works too much day and night? And then I ask, <coughs> how to know which is my own truth? 
which you say is already in me, and how to get free from a very strong desire to be loved by a certain man, and then being rejected, and so loving myself into painful darkness. For there is no self-love in me whatsoever to keep me strong is that situation. I will be grateful if you show me the way and also give me a new name since I am very different now. Deepest thanks for being and sharing your time and wisdom and light. Son, from Gali, from Israel. How to become mindless? Your question. How to turn off this computer which works too much day and night? So I will tell you how to be mindless instantly and how to turn off all the switches which are working day and night. Very simple and you can have it just now. And what is that? Keep quiet. Hmm? Keep quiet and don't make any effort to keep quiet. And don't think, first of all, do not let a thought stir in your mind. Do you follow? No thought, because every thought is a graveyard. Every thought is past. Can you think anything which is not past? Can you think anything which is not past? To think means you have got to go to graveyard and dig the graves, find out, what is in it. That means thought. No use going to graveyard. Therefore, when you don't think, you are free. (coughs) Just for one second, you don't think. And in that second, in that moment, in that instant, you will kiss freedom. have a desire to meet a man. Both things at the same time are not going to happen. One, one at a time. (laughs) One at a time, either you are busy with a man or you are busy with your own self. And I give you a trick. If you are busy with your own self, and later, if you are busy with the thousand men at the same time, yet you are not touching any one of them. First you do this, and then you try later on in Jerusalem. (laughs) (coughs) Then also you say, if this man rejected you, 
you will be in painful darkness for there's no self and love in whatsoever and keep me strong in that situation hmm? I am very different now so I need a new name How long you are going to stay here? Okay. So if you say that you are different now, I will give you a name that I am different now. <laughs> This name means I am stranger now, stranger, very different than I was before and this is called Vichitra. Can you read it? Vichitra. Hmm. Then something. What is this? <coughs> It's not dry, no? <laughs> your face, it means, it means he has never meditated in his life. Aja, <laughs> aja. <laughs> Gate, Paragate, Parasamgate, Bodhisha. This is it. No letter with this. Acha. Freedom now, Arthur. Hmm? Freedom now. Who is this man? Freedom now? <laughs> hmm? Dear Papaji, freedom now. Very good.
you declare freedom now? Yes. No, 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 no. don't. <laughs> Not to you. <laughs> uh, you made a question into a statement. Hmm? <laughs> question? You Which? made a question into a statement. Yeah. This is a question. Mm. Well, yes, I think I was asking you. <laughs> hmm? You said freedom now? Yeah, and I didn't think you were right. <laughs> <laughs> This question is to freedom? This question you're asking to freedom? Or Actually, to I, I, hmm? I suppose I'm asking you for freedom. Achha, okay. <laughs> if you're asking this question to me, means how to be free, no? Yes. What is freedom? Like this thing, isn't it? This is the question. Yes. My answer is you are already free. <laughs> what is that? No? I'm, a, I'm aware of that. Huh? I'm aware of that, but I, my past, I feel like my past will not hmm. let me free. Let me free? I say you are free. <laughs> That's all. I don't speak lie. Why don't you accept it? Why don't you accept it? If I say you are a foolish man, will you accept it? If you Certainly say not. <laughs> but I'm not calling you any name. I say you are free. There couldn't be any better advice than this. There cannot be any better gift in the world than this, that you are free. Everybody wants to be free. That's how we have been brought here to see freedom by our own self in this lifetime, or this year, or now in satsang. So, you have to choose. I am free now. If not, postpone it to this year. If not, up to the end of this life. No problem. So this is, this depends upon how eager you are. This needs your absolute strong desire that I want to be free now. I want to be free now. Yeah. So this is a question, and when I tell you, you are already free, what is going to be your next question? Either you have to say, I accept, or you have to say, I reject. I accept you. Okay. Welcome. Well done. <laughs> I am happy. And I congratulate you on my own behalf and behalf of such. Already congratulations. Okay. <laughs> this is how it is done. <laughs> Thank you. Papa? Uh, when did you come? <laughs> when did you come? A few, two weeks ago. Oh, I was not here, no? Oh. Hmm. I am not satisfied. Hmm? I am not satisfied. With? I am not free. Hmm? There is still one experience. What? The experience. Last time you said you are satisfied. I am not satisfied. Now you are not satisfied. What is this dissatisfaction now? What is this? Huh? What is this? What is? What is this dissatisfaction? Hmm? The thoughts. 
Hmm? Thought. What? Thought. Thought. And doubt and dissatisfaction is the same thing. Where this doubt is lodging, where is this doubt? If it is in the head, cut off that head. If it is in the nose, remove the nose. Yeah. Yeah. That is the teaching of a very little seven-year-old girl in Varanasi. Her father was giving satsang. Many people attended it. And she asked her father, My dear Papa, why all these people come here to see you early morning, 4 a.m.? My dear child, they all come for freedom. Why they should come early morning, winter, 4 a.m.? Very cold. Then she said, Papa, I cannot believe 500 people coming for freedom. I don't believe, Papa. Then she went away. She was a child, started playing next morning. She stood at the gate and told, Now today my Papa wants first to interview each man and then he will call you in. Now you lie down on this log of wood, keep your head and I will remove your head, take it on my palm and show to my father and if he wants you come in, then you have to come in. <laughs> this head. And I am making this knife very sharp till last night. You can see, it will not give you any pain. Instantly I will remove your head from your body. Now, the first part you came, they said, we have just to see him tonight because we have to attend one court case, so we wanted to have blessing, for that purpose we came. And then we have touched his gate, so we have grace, now we go to the court. Seven batch, other batch came. Our son is very sick and he is about to die. We have come to see him because we want his grace so that our son doesn't die. This party also removed. So, next party said, we have come here, not for satsang this morning, but there is going to be alliance to be fixed with the other party for marriage of my daughter. So, we wanted his blessing, so we salute at the gate and tomorrow will come. So, all these people had a reason and nobody was there, he is waiting inside and went out at about six hours, nobody returned, two hours, four to six. And he saw his daughter having a chopper in her hand. And she said, Papa, I didn't I tell you, nobody comes for freedom. Why you waste your time? You here you waste time from four to eight, and then you go with those people to give satsang to at other places and then you come after ten days and you don't give us your love even Why you are wasting your time. Today I was there, everybody came with some interest, with some purpose. Therefore they didn't come. Therefore, if you have to see a saint, remove your head. And if he agrees, he will interview with you. Now I remove your head and now you speak. Where is the doubt? Doubts are in the head only and when it is removed you are doubtless. Then you are free. So if you understand, you are not going to keep any doubt because that is cut apart. So you think people who come for satsang, they have to remove their head outside at the gate, 
then enter and I assure you freedom instantly and if somebody speaks I'm not enlightened, he has not removed his head. So I will send him back again. Now, are you in doubt? Yes. Eh? <laughs> you go out and Bharata Mitra will come with you with a chopper. <laughs> Because this is a Hebrew head, isn't it? You are not from Israel. Yes. A Hebrew head has to be chopped by another Hebrew head. <laughs> Kosher. <laughs> so you go and you go with him and then come tomorrow no, no, you will be no more. <laughs> Annette, Annette, I feel so blessed to be with you here in Lucknow. At first, I saw a picture of you in my friend's home and immediately I felt the love from you and I asked, who is that? <clears throat> In the last satsang, many people talked about the glimpse or having an experience of enlightenment. At first, I thought, hmm, had these, I had these glimpses, but then I thought, maybe not. I know I feel so much love when I am with you, or Gangaji, I feel that I am grounded in my heart. More and more also, there is something beyond this love. Can you show me the way? And it. So I spoke yesterday, did that so, day before yesterday about the glimpses, and I will speak again about these glimpses and what is called this glimpse. So, let's see. So keep this for tomorrow. What is this? So good. Uh, Radhika? Radhika has done it. And we keep it. Hmm? Keep it for tomorrow. To go. Radhika. Hmm? Yes. Chara.